Cheers everyone, hi. How are you doing today? I'm well. I am filming a podcast just off the cuff because I wanted to prove to myself that I can do it anytime, no problem, because usually I have more energy than I do in this current moment. I just spent a full day at work and the sun is about to set currently setting so hopefully I can get a podcast out of this before it's dark all around me. Um, I kind of do like a little bit of weather transition throughout my videos just because I think it's pretty cool. Atmos atmospheric perspective. It's pretty weird also that I'm having a coffee at like eight o'clock but I still have to move my van. My day's not over. I just got to find some parking out of town and even though I'm back at work at 10 a.m. tomorrow. I feel like I'm jumping the gun. There's a few updates since last time. I ended up getting a job on the West Coast over here. So at a bar slash coffee shop. And it's very new still, so I'm still getting used to it. But plans changed because I thought I was going to go back to Vancouver to get a job that I previously had. But... That doesn't seem to be the case anymore and i'm so excited for what my summer is starting to look like now i'm just trying to get all my friends to start visiting me <laughs> and we can go to the beach together and surf together please guys do this um but yeah so i'm staying put which i'm happy about because i have no money and i'm gonna start making money quickly and afford the trip back to ontario later this year see isn't this all a great plan these windows are really fogging up. That happens every evening once that sun sets and there's no more heat in the air. It's like all foggy windows because I'm all warm in here because the van's all been warm and it's cold outside. Y'all know how condensation works, but I really know how it works because every single day I deal with it. And there are a few hacks that I definitely am curious about trying in the future about condensation. Uh, someone, Lisa, sent me a video about putting bubble wrap on your windows just every day and how much uh, condensation that interrupts because it acts as a vapor barrier. And I'm like, that sounds genius. Once I settle down or find a place that has some bubble wrap, I may do that. <laughs> Look at me planning to settle down to buy bubble wrap. How exciting. And besides that, I've just been having so much fun doing these adventures. Uh, this time has turned around. I am just having more and more fun the longer I stay here. So I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to get right into these questions. And the first question is, does your van have a name? This question keeps running around and I feel like it's people love a name. Everyone names their, their boats and their houses or like their vans and... I need to stick with the name and start calling it something. But I think I really liked the suggestion brown sugar because I always cook with brown sugar so much and it, that's just such a cute name. Uh, so brown sugar is my top contender. But yeah, what's, what's it with me not to like commit? Should I just start calling it brown sugar? Burr sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, or it used to be called Scar and then it was called Bun before that by the previous owners. So can we mush them up all together and create something? I will sleep on it. But yeah, brown sugar. Um, I think I should make a sticker of its name under it or something and just like really solidify it that way because I think that's a really cute name and the longer uh, it has that name, the more attachment it can grow and more personality. And I think that is a good decision. This is a weird analysis of what names mean, but... That's how I feel, and thank you for the question. Little Urban Gardener asks, would you ever consider going out east, out to the east coast? There are some beautiful spots in PEI and Newfoundland that I think you'd love. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. That would be so awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have been to Nova Scotia, 
not in my van though and not on my like own slow terms like it really takes me a long time to figure out how to enjoy a certain place so i would love to go back to all those places with my van because yeah i did a little bit of touring of pei but only the tourist stuff right um i really didn't like live there so i would love to check out all those places um yeah, hopefully we make enough money here that maybe we can afford that trip later too. Doubtful, because it's expensive to live here, actually. But we'll see if we figure some stuff out. Anyways, PEI, why does that like sound so nice to me? Like the smallest little province, just like, uh, I would get to know the entire island so well. It's an island, that's so cool like i'm on an island here but that's on the other side anyways those are really great uh dreams and things to think about so that was a fun question i hope to keep exploring at a good pace at a decent pace not too fast not too slow just a comfortable right pace next question great finds love your videos maybe you could elaborate on what you would do differently places to explore next time traveling northern ontario and across canada Okay, so yeah, this is because in my previous episode, I think I mentioned that I would have done it differently. There's lots of stuff that I would do differently, but not really differently. I'm happy with how I did it, and it was the best journey ever. It's just I would want to do so much more, and just like, because I could do it back and forth, back and forth so many times, and just be a completely different and amazing experience. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of thinking next time I'm going to be doing it differently, you know? Uh, and maybe I'll go through Jasper. I've heard so much good talk about Jasper and just take the long way around. But then I would also want to do like through the States one time, maybe one way. Uh, it's fun to think about, but yeah, I definitely want to be on the road for a long time. It's, it's grooving with me and my van is doing such a good job. My love for van life is just building and building the longer it goes on, but I feel like it's the opposite with my van. She, brown sugar, she's just getting older, you know? And she's always making new noises and I'm keeping up with the fluids, but maybe I should take her in for more oil changes once in a while, but I don't know. That's always my nervous thing. She's doing great, so. I feel like it's already getting darker, yikes. Okay, let's move on with this. Um, I have lots of questions for your van, says Linda. I have a 1979 Dodge Camper Van. Old Van Club, welcome. Uh, I'm getting it ready for a trip across Canada. You're gonna love it. How was the drive through Ontario and the Rockies? Oh, uh, Ontario was the best. Wait, to finish your comment. By the way, I love the way you present your van life. It's really. I think you might have meant reality, but it's really. Thank you for sharing, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Um, so how was my trip through the Rockies? That was really exciting. I wish I bought a Banff Pass so I could stop at more spots and like really go hiking when I was going through there. But it was overwhelming because it was the first time I ever saw a mountain and it was just so surreal the entire time and just the rivers and I did stay at one spot for a few days which was really really fun and I explored around that and it was just surprise after surprise it's like that's the thing like you go in expecting something but it's always way more than that and it fulfills your expectations 120% so that was really enjoyable and Ontario Lake Superior was a dream I stopped at so many rest stops at a certain point I was stopping like every single rest stop because I was just like I can't get enough I need to see them all and I have so many favorite spots now and I made labels of my entire trip along the way but for some reason my phone's labels isn't even showing up anymore so I have to like restart but honestly I haven't even ma been making labels and now I'm just like Whatever, if I remember, then I remember. I should get a real physical map so I can't just get my apps deleted or whatever. Whatever happened, but yeah, Lake Ontario, Thunder Bay. I wish I stayed longer in Thunder Bay, but it was beautiful. Can't wait to go back through there. And uh, I should sit down and really think about those stories because I feel like there's some good, good gemstones, literally, that could come out of that. Hmm. 
So I have another question here. Steven, do you dream a lot? Uh, do you mean daydream or like dream in bed? You probably mean dream in bed. And eh, yeah, when I have dreams, they're like spurts of dreams. Like I feel like I have dreams for like a week straight and then I don't have a, dreams for like a couple weeks after that. And I'm currently, it's been a little while since I've had my last dream, but they are sometimes really vivid. And sometimes I get these lucid dreams where I can really move around in them and it's wild or at least like really force my mind to make a movement and like I feel like I'm really there and recently I've started keeping a dream journal so it's fun to look back on what the hell happened um because yeah it just disappears immediately but dreams are really fun and really special to me so I really need to like study them a little bit more probably what is the last cool thing that you've seen that's a very present question what's the last cool thing that I saw Something that pops out as cool. There's this guy that is pretty cool. I saw him sitting at a table. <laughs> that feels like that jumps out as the coolest thing that I saw. <laughs> He's like too cool for school cool. Got a cool haircut. Plays a cool instrument. Just owns the space that he's in. That's so random. That's the stupidest answer ever. But moving on, that was a question. So got to answer. <laughs> What's the last... Oh, okay. A useful van tool you, you've, you've used. I've shown you my garden sprayer in previous videos. Uh, I can tell you one not useful gadget that I hate, um, which is not the question, but my coffee filter does not work. Like, you guys have seen my, like, process for coffee where I, like, burn my fingers and hold the coffee bag. Like, I do it every morning and it's the way of things, but, like, those things are supposed to work and the process should be so much easier. So I've just been thinking about, like, trying to fix it myself and drilling a few little holes here and there and hopefully not breaking it, but... Because it is something that I use every day, but uh, it's not the most useful. But on the general, everyone should have a little coffee maker. They're the best. And my gr my coffee bean grinder and the entire process is so fun and totally about my morning. And I love that. I love that. Another question is, is there anything that you're looking forward to? Uh, oh my goodness, yes. So I just learned about this today at work. I found out that we're doing a work trip. So I just got this job, but we're doing a work trip on a sailboat <laughs> to some random island off the coast. So it's some island that I've never been to before, but hopefully I get some awesome footage about it. And yeah, I'm super excited for it. It's so random that I get to be included in this all of a sudden because I just got here, but I accept and I'm very excited for it. It's important to have something to look forward to. I, I was always a fan of buying concert tickets and then like having that like a couple months away to be like, yes, I can't wait something to look forward to. So even though this is actually happening just in a couple days, I think <laughs> that's the thing about this job. Everything's like, I think, like, I think this is when my first shift is. I am starting in your heart. You know how I think I got this job actually is from performing at the open mic night. I'm sorry, everyone that wanted footage of that did not get footage. I was kind of drunk and I'm surprised I even got through it, but it was my first time ever performing live at an open mic night with with a guitar their guitar and i played moon shadow moon shadow moon shadow thanks to i think karen suggested it while we were on a live stream and i was like i have to learn that song and then i learned it and i played it and everyone loved it i'm pretty sure it was either way it was such a fun night for me so we have one more question and then we have to do this the segments the segments okay i totally forgot about the segments it is what it is, you know? Just gotta chill, okay? It's dark, it's dark, you know? It brightens up every day. How do you cope with being alone? How do I cope with being alone? I feel like that's a really great question and something that I've been really dealing with for the past few weeks. Moving to a new place, yeah, you don't know anyone anymore. And sometimes you get used to knowing people and being friends with people and having that comfort and conversation and connection. And for a couple of weeks, I was really lost. Maybe longer than that. Maybe it was like three or four weeks. 
I should look at a calendar sometime because I was feeling lonely for quite a while, but it has been solved and that's been powering through it with friendships, staying close to people on the phone, calling people regularly, really connecting with my friends back home, and then finding other ways to be social in town. Like I was just distracted by the wrong type of things. I was having a great time at the beach, but there was just something that was gnawing at my mind. And now I'm just enjoying everything so much more. And I have a new pair of binoculars that I've been using that have also been enhancing the enjoyment of nature. So yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. I just felt like it was the end of the world when I was in it, you know? And it's such a horrible feeling. And I have friends that are going through this and go through this. And, you know, it's like, just be there for each other and it gets better. It ebbs and it flows. And you really have to keep that in mind. So embrace it and hopefully use it for good. But yeah, loneliness can be solved by social interaction and just loving yourself and loving your rituals and just having a great time no matter what. But also leaning into it, leaning into the sadness is healthy. So just understand it and feel it and flow with it. Generic cookie, generic fortune cookie advice, but you're welcome. <laughs> okay, before it gets any darker, let's do a segment. Look at this thing. I don't know what this is. It's like a seed that I found while I was walking on a beach. It started to dry out and it's actually like cracking a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I would like to look this up on the internet or figure out what this could be. It's got like striations. It's pretty hard, but it's very light. It's pretty cool though, right? Some sort of beach seed. I'm pretty sure it's not a coconut. A very new addition, and it's something in the front of my van. Story time, story time, story time, story time, time for story. Story time. So, why is it getting so dark? So, since i kind of been talking about my new job, because it's really all that's on my mind recently, I'll tell you a story about how I got the job. So, luckily I was told about this bar slash restaurant thing from a friend. He was going there, and he loved it. And when I decided to go, he bailed on me and said he couldn't show up. And I was like, fuck, I have to make friends and be social and just like make sure I have a good time because it's so much harder to have a good time when you don't have that comfort with a friend as I thought. But that is not the case because I had such a blast. I really focused on just having the most fun time listening to all the musicians. And I even got a girl to play me a Joni Mitchell song both sides now it was very touching uh and I met so many people on that day so fast forward one week later where I go again for the same open mic night it's a weekly thing on Wednesdays this time I was going into that open mic night with a mission <laughs> so I went that night being like you know what it would be great if I found a job the only thing that's pulling me away from Ukulele is the job thing going back to Vancouver and such but maybe I can find a job here. Everyone I talk to is like, everyone's hiring, everyone's hiring. So I just went into being like, okay, so my question to meet people slash talk to people is kind of going to be like, give me a job. So I'm just going to be begging for jobs from people. I don't know. No, but honestly, I was just a casual conversation and it just managed to come up. Like people love talking about their work. It's what they're so focused on, you know? So I got tons of emails from people for different resorts to go apply to, hotels. Um, I met some people that worked at the kayak place that I had applied to originally. It's one job that I did end up applying to. And they were like, yeah, go in there in person with a resume and like make an impression and you could totally get a job. So I was like, that's really nice. So that was great encouragement. Um, but then later in the night, I did my performance and I was pretty, pretty drunk at that moment. I a few, few beers in. I think it was a total of four that evening and I was just I don't know talking to everyone being like are you hiring like are you a person that's hiring right now and eventually I ran into the owner of the bar and he was such a nice guy we just chit-chatted for like two minutes and ended up negotiating 
a deal, getting his number, like fully doing the thing. Uh, it was such a blur and I hardly remember it. I negotiated a good hourly wage for myself. So good job intoxicated me. And that's very much the theme of this place, you know, laid back, not too, su not too serious. We'll take you on sailing trips. Apparently, I'm just, I just started. That's kind of why I didn't really talk about it or like it came out of nowhere because it really did come out of nowhere. And I wasn't telling people when I thought I had the job because I was like, I don't really know if I have the job or like what the job's even going to be like. And even at this point, I don't, I only have one shift really scheduled, but you know, it's, it's the laid back town life and I'm trying to uh, amalgamate into it right that's the word it's been really easy to make friends because everyone's so cool and interesting that's been really fun so that is my story time but please ask more questions uh there's a few more that i have but i could definitely use some more questions from you guys anything ask about anything really no limit art van life hobbies weather I just posted my kayaking in Tofino video, but I really wanted to add a voiceover to that to like really make it a full moment of how I was experiencing the thing. But I was too in a rush and too excited to post it, so I got it up. But I wanted to say like, it was so fun. And the people that I got to meet during that was so, were so interesting. It was really a turning point for that loneliness. I just like started to get out of my shell, I don't know, and just like have a different perspective. I was able to meet some people from Quebec that were doing the full Canada trip that they had done it in like a couple weeks and they had a really cute dog and they had a really amazing van and they were just such adventurers. I feel like all the Quebec people here, there's so many Quebec people here and they're all adventurers. It's so awesome. Um, really drawn to it and yeah, the one guy, he was just really cool and, like, really into nature and really into, like, all the things. He's the one that, like, picked up the slug. And because he picked it up, like, I wasn't going to pick up the slug myself because that's kind of creepy. But he, like, picked it up. I was able to, like, just give a little lick. And, like, don't judge me. But the tour guide was like, there's this thing called the slug club. If you lick the slug, you can be in the club. And I was like, there's a club. She just sold it real well. <laughs> I really wanted to be in that club. And also she told a story about an anesthetic, natural anesthetic property on the slug that they actually used the slug for dentistry work or something. I don't remember the fact exactly, but yeah, it's a numbing agent. So when I licked it, my tongue was very tingly and strange, but it was a really tiny lick. So so good but yeah that trip was amazing and just using the sea kayak and using the pedals with it and like cutting through the waves and going through choppy water was also exciting the most exciting parts of that trip i actually really wasn't even able to film because it was too exciting it was too like engaging i had to focus or i would flip <laughs> the tour guys was the tour guide was really nervous for me at first because she's like okay so you don't really have any kayak experience and you're by yourself. Most kayaks are two people and they're like much easier to not flip. And yeah, I'm nervous for the ride back for you. I don't know. Like she was really trying to convince me to go in a kayak with her, but I was like, that's nice of you, but I kind of want to try it myself. And yeah, got my way and I didn't flip and she trusts me now. So thanks, Kate. Kate was really awesome. She had like so much good information, well presented, and all the cool trees. We saw a celebrity tree, the tree of life, and the hanging tree, and yeah, Mirrors Island. It was so cool. This is the thing. Podcasts are all audio based. It doesn't even matter that I'm just like a darkness. We don't need visuals for a podcast, right? Right? Thank you guys for watching. I should just end this now because... It's not going anywhere. Either way, we kind of enjoyed the sunset together, so wasn't that fun? I think I actually started this after the sun was fully set, but I have a really nice view out of the back of my window right now. It's like mountains and ocean. <sighs> okay, bye. <laughs>